I am suspicious of the theology that says if I am living right, we will see that by my health, beauty, and social success, <laughs> I am suspicious because the corollary to that theology is the difficulty, ugliness, and suffering are evidence of moral failure. Yes, we bear responsibilities, but I cannot believe in a theology that condemns a person with a genetic disease. We have reason to help us discern what is in our sphere of influence and what is not. Yet somehow that moral success equals life success theology keeps creeping into many of our religious institutions. Just consider a moment what comes to mind when I say successful congregation. Budget. Visibility, big building. Membership. Sense of community. Bringing more love into the world. Bringing more love into the world. More young people. Now we're talking. That was teacher Jesus once observed. For where your heart is, there your treasure shall also be. When our hearts are really into notions of successful faith communities that count dollars, buildings, and members, we risk losing our faithful promises to make this world a better place, to do justice, to love mercy, to tend this earth. What we measure is what we value. Are we measuring how we make a difference? Our covenant of faithful promises calls us to measure how well we are fulfilling it. You have gifts and talents. You have a calling. You do not need permission to make a difference for goodness sake. You are living here, and that means you bear responsibilities along with the rest of us. Fulfilling them can even be fun. Yes, there will be slogging through muck. Yes, <laughs> there will be failures. Yes, you probably will have to deal with both shame and guilt. That's why we support one another and risk letting ourselves being supported when we need it. If life was supposed to be easy, we would not have evolved joy in developing mastery of new skills or the capacity to work for decades to bring about needful change and still find satisfaction and pleasure in that work. Our connections and caring help us endure, learn, make amends when amends are needed, and go risk again doing what needs to be done. A few people attending to something important can have a big effect. Depending on how they invite and share, the same group might even grow as they set out risking faithfully. A young adult group might develop a model of growing young adult ministries and share it. A few people might form a collaborative and create inspirational images together. Every day, our world is being challenged and changed by small groups of people answering their calling and risking mightily. Some of them fail, and then they back up and risk again. Faith in means failing and trying again. None of us are perfect. We know that, even if we do not like it, we still strive to change. We know that human institutions are imperfect. We know that the environment is in trouble. We know there is great suffering being inflicted upon a great many people. Sometimes we talk ourselves into doing nothing by reciting all that is wrong. As people of hope, we are called to answer differently because we know there is trouble and imperfection including right inside ourselves. 
There are people hurting with the call to help. There's a desecrated world with the call to restore it. There are governments and institutions that need to change with the call to guide them to a better place. Be brave. Use your digital media or use the Pew Buddy system, but connect with another risk faker. Make a commitment for a faithful risk every week. Take the risk, report back. After a few weeks, move up to two faithful risks until it is a daily habit. Most of us did not learn to be afraid all at once. We will only learn to be brave one risk at a time. Do not seek to clear every path before you begin. Make way only as needed, or making way will end up taking over and becoming your mission. Every day we have plenty of reasons to be disheartened, discouraged, and despairing, unless we have lots of other reasons to be hopeful, encouraged, and glad to give however we can give to be part of creating more good right now. In your networks, who are your inspiration engines? The people who encourage and inspire you? How are you inspiring and encouraging others? How are you risking faithfully 